Hello and welcome to the part 24 and also the second last part before the recap uh, of my F1 2024 season simulation. If you, if you missed the last part, part 23, that was the Qatar Sprint and Grand Prix recently, the Sprint Weekend. Make sure to check out one out before watching this video. Uh, yeah, last race of the simulation. We finally got here. Uh, both, championship, both championships are already sealed but there's still one more race to do uh still uh, one more win to get essentially as, as yeah <laughs> this may be the uh, this may be crazier since uh we're at the start, end of the season and uh the, the reliability was almost problem already in a couple of races before this so uh just the weather obviously abu dhabi is in the desert so it's very likely for it to rain on this, on the, uh, this time of the year essentially and yeah that's that's the case inside it was what's happened is that there's no rain expected for the entire weekend so uh upgrades no upgrades whatsoever it's the last race no no one cares about without upgrades anymore right uh yeah, let's jump straight into q1 which already was uh kind of kind of strange uh we had russell and verstappen suffering from reliability issues uh but the russell uh over overcome I mean, the Russell's team overcome the reality issues, but finally got out to do a lap. He had the driver, unfortunately, uh, didn't set up a lap time. So uh, both of them out in Q1 provisionally. Well, not provisionally, they're just out in Q1 uh, alongside them, Albon, Joe, and Baltas. No, uh, provisionally out in Q1 as well. Uh, Charles Leclerc, Carl Sainz, and Perez top the session provisionally. As Alonso Stroll, Gasly, Ocon, PS3, Hulk, Henry, Magnuson, Hamilton, Sergeant, Norris, Ricardo, and Alban, uh, Alban, Joe, Bottas, Russell, Persephone, Ardens, 5, uh, provisionally out in Q1. So, uh, let's see changes. As uh, I believe there's only one change that's Charles Leclerc, as he left and deleted, drops from P1 to P2, so no big, no big deal there. Officially out in Q1 in Abu Dhabi or Alban, Joe, Bottas, Russell, and Max Verstappen. So, Q2 time, and we have Carl Sainz stopping the session once again. Uh, uh, this time, I had Norris, Piastri, so McLaren is uh, yeah, pretty much uh, finally, <laughs> after a long time. P4 for Lewis Hamilton, P5 for Perez, and it's Alonso Leclerc Stroll. Hulkenberg somehow made it into, made it into Q3. Uh, just like last year, and the, and the final race somehow is just got that got got awful Haas car into Q3. Ricardo somehow made it through as well. I have two Alpine cars, which looked quick again this weekend. Unfortunately for them, it's a early key to exit for both of them just outside, uh, getting through. But yeah, it's 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 less than a tenth of a second for both of them. Unfortunately. Uh, Sergeant VP13 in provision knocked out as well. That's Sinoda and Magnussen. So those drivers are provisionally knocked out. Let's see if there are any changes. As I believe there are there are changes. There's uh the lead lap time for Oscar Piastri, who drops from P3 to P7. I believe that's the only change. So uh, final classification knocked out in Q2. Ocon Gasly, Sergeant Sinoda and Magnussen. So let's see who's in the pole position for the final race of the season. As Charles Leclerc is in the provisional pole position for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, then it's Carl Sainz in P2, Alonso P3, Perez P4, Hamilton P5, Gestri P6, Norris P7, Stroll P8, Ricardo P9, and I'll be Kokomar in P10. Yep, yeah. uh, Ferrari 1 2 provisionally looks very promising for them. McLaren and both of them in P7, uh, slight improvement over the last few weekends where they really struggled. Especially in the last one. Um, and yeah, let's see if there are any changes for this one. As I believe there are two changes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, there should be a little, little lap time for Carl Sainz as well as Checo Perez. This would mean that Checo Perez ends up with no time because he got his previous lap time deleted as well. So it's a P10 start for Checo Perez. Uh, let's recap the grid for the final race of the season. So we have Charles Leclerc lining up a pole position for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, Fernando Alonso alongside him in P2, 
Then it's Sizing P3, Hamilton P4, PS3 P5, Norris P6, Stroll P7, Ricardo P8, Hulkenberg P9, and Nick, uh, Checo Perez in P10. Then starting outside the top 10 is Ocon, Gasly, Sargent, Sunoda, Magnussen, Albon, Joe, Bottas, Russell, and Max Verstappen. Very, very unusual thing to see. Max Verstappen staffing, starting from the last place on the grid. So, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to jinx anything. But uh, yeah, he he won from like P14 uh, and got into the first place within 14 laps in Spa, for example, two years ago. So yeah, <laughs> uh, from last to first challenge for back to step for the for the final years of the season is gonna be pretty funny to see. But yeah, let, let's see what actually happened in the race. As we have Charles Leclerc winning the last race of the season ahead of Checo Perez in P2 and Carlos Sainz in P3 with the fastest lap. Then it's Esteban Ocon P4, Lewis Hamilton P5, Stroll P6, Oscar Piastri P7, George Russell P8, Lionel Norris P9, and Nico Hulkenberg gets another point finish for Haas in this, in this season. Uh, I have no idea how the Haas got the point, uh, how, it, how it stayed in the points, but I'm not complaining. Um, uh, the people who know my, my channel and uh, know my commentary know that I, I'm a big Hulkenberg fan. He's my favorite driver. So I, I'm always glad to see this somehow happening. Uh, you can know that P11, P12 for Max Verstappen, and I believe this is the first time Max hasn't finished in the top 10 uh, on Sunday, uh, excluding DNFs, ever since like 2016. So, insane, like 80 years of instant top 10 finishes for Max Verstappen. We just comes to an end, uh, mainly because. As as uh, as in qualifying, he got a reliability issue. Started from P20 in the race, it's not much better. But for, uh, fortunately for him, he actually could finish the race. But uh, unfortunately, also broke his record. So I don't know if, if it was worth it to finish uh, in itself. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. P13 for Gasly. Uh, yeah, this is this, this was another another bad weekend from the from the Alpine side of the garage. Of uh, this side, as they kind of screw up out Gatley's car for this race, so the race pace was much much slower than Ocon's, for example, which uh, Ocon in P4, I mean uh, Alpine was supposed to be up there. Unfortunately for Gasly, it also means that Ocon is probably going to finish out of him in the Drivers' Championship. Sergeant in P14 had up Albon, so uh, another another Albon beaten moment. Uh, Kevin Magnussen in P16, Bottas P17, and Guayne show the last of the finishing drivers, as with Alonso and Ricardo. Suffering from mechanical failures uh, throughout the Grand Prix. Uh, only Alonso has brought, brought out a safety car. Uh, Ricardo did, uh, Ricardo's didn't, so only had one safety car. We shuffled the grid. But, but yeah, Charles Leclerc could have managed to win the race nonetheless from pole position. Fortunately for from him, his pole to conversion rate uh, raises by, like, <laughs> by a bit. So it's from really, really, really bad, one of the worst, to Almost one of the worst, essentially. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this was th these were the fi final results, well, final race results of the simulation. And this is the final World Championship standings. Max Verstappen, World Champion, 431 points, 8 victories, 16 podiums, and 10 pole positions. Nice fastest laps at 14. Very good season for Max. Then it's Charles Leclerc in P2, 287 points, Jobs Alonso. Four victories, seven podiums, four poles, and four fastest laps. Thanks for Fernando Alonso in P3, who dropped two P3 uh, after the last race. Three victories, eight podiums, three poles, and two fastest laps. Chico Perez in P4, uh, jumps Norris in the last race, a victory, and seven podiums. And it's Lionel Norris, who drops two. Uh, okay, uh, Norris should, should have no points to score. Uh, not really sure what happened here. Uh, didn't Norris finish P10? Okay, I probably finished P10. No, no, wait, he didn't. Okay, it's it's P9 for Lana Norris then, I, I believe so. Yeah, P9. So, uh, the points are added correctly. It's just that it says plus one instead of plus two. My apologies there. It's just, it's just my mistake. It doesn't matter. Anyway, in the end, 229 points for Lando Norris so far in P5. Oh, so far at the end of the season is the final standings. Seven podiums, two poles, and a fastest lap as well. Carlos Sainz finishes the season in P6, 222 points. So better than last year, but 
Uh, yeah, uh, not, not, uh, not the greatest season from Carlos Sainz. Even though his performances were good, just the reliability was kind of holding, uh, holding him back. A victory, eight podiums, two poles, and fast slab as well. Carlos, P7 for Oscar Piastri, 204 points, two victories, five podiums, three poles, and a fast slab. Uh, decent season uh, was looking extremely good at the start of the season, then kind of dropped off, let, let, let Lando overtaking the points again and finish the season. Only 25 points behind Lando, so a huge improvement over last season, for example, as those head to heads will show just how close this lineup was. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, P8, 184 points. So, finishes the season after being behind Russell for the entire season in the last race, overtakes Russell by one singular point and finishes P8 in the Drivers' Championship. <laughs> this, is, this is funny, don't go high. A victory and two podiums for Lewis Hamilton for the season as well. George Russell in P9, uh, one point behind, 183 points, a victory and seven podiums. So, much more, much more podiums. Uh, many more podiums, but uh, unfortunately falls short in the last race by one singular point. Unfortunately, for Russell there. P10 for Stroll, 129 points and two podiums. Yeah, pretty much a season we would expect from Stroll. Uh, the gap to Lons is still insanely huge. And, and just, Stroll is not going out of that team unless he wants to himself. And Brown doesn't just doesn't look like it. We just don't see in Stroll's head at the moment. P11 for Esteban Ocon, who re remains in a front of Gasly in the Drivers' Championship, despite losing in pretty much every single head-to-head. -head. So, so we had another another weird season of Ocon beating beating his teammate well, uh, statistically being the the worst driver, but beating his teammate by 13 points anyway. <laughs> his teammate Pierre Gasly in P12, 75 points and a podium. Yuki Tsunoda had an amazing first half of the season. Then the Racing Bulls team just couldn't score points. Ricardo could score a bit of, a bit of the points in the later, later part of the season, but the car just wasn't good there, good enough. I wasn't there. Uh, Sierra pretty much scored almost no points ever since the ever since the summer break. Uh, Alex Albon uh, pretty much carried by that podium in Saudi Arabia, uh, 19 points and a podium P14. Uh, before P15 is Hulkenberg, also a 19 points, also a podium. But behind Albon because his podium was a P3 and Albon's was P2. So this means Albon's Albon finishes ahead of Hulkenberg in the driver's championship despite having uh the same points and the same amount of podiums. P16 for Sargent on 16 points. A much better season for Sargent showed good signs of improvement. F fell fallen short of Albon and especially in qualifying, the gap was still relatively big. But in the races, Sargent could uh could beat Albon sometimes and that's a good sign of an improvement they finish three points away from each other so this could in in real life could, this could probably mean that sergeant could keep in uh his seat for another year we don't really know though he's 17 for the daniel ricardo on 15 points the point you have to say that is is extreme but as we'll see in the red hands later uh is, this line was actually very close uh towards the end of the season it was just that similar situation to mercedes uh, Russell was very, very good at the start of the season, where when the Mercedes car was much better compared to the rest of the field. That was the same thing for the Racing Bulls car, which dropped off throughout the season. And so that scored the points where 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 the car when the car was good. And yeah, all, all credit to him. He finished with 53 points compared to Ricardo's 15. Uh, pretty much this, uh, well, killing Ricardo's career in this case. Uh, and yeah, this is just. Just how it went. Alshon Bottas P18 in five points, uh, 100 percent of the points from the team. As Joe gets zero, Magnussen on the P19 on one point. Uh, yeah, uh, the Haas, the Haas were just a one mare team, but at least one point for Magnussen. That was the race where Hulkenberg scored the podium. So it's like uh, the the other weekend, uh, Magnussen uh, could have most deserved point. I mean. Yeah, it was it was a crazy race, but but you know. Anyways, uh, let's get into the constructors. Final standings of the constructor standings of uh, of the simulation. Red Bull in P one, the constructors champions, six hundred sixteen seven points, nine victories, twenty three podiums, ten poles, and fourteen passes laps. Honestly, Red both Red Bull and Max won the championship two races ago or three races ago actually in Brazil, 
Uh, and yeah, it wasn't a it wasn't a boring season. We had five different teams winning a race. I believe like eight different drivers or nine different drivers winning a race as well. Yeah, pretty much every single driver from the top team except Lance Stroll won a race. So nine different winners. I mean, if you get this kind of a season, is instant improvement over last year, despite Max winning uh, pretty dominantly in the end, uh, with Red Bull having the dominant statistics as well. Even though most of those most of the stats come from Max and stuff on himself. Uh, for our MP2, uh, it was an up and up and down season for for the Scuderia, but. Fortunately for them, they finished on P2. Uh, this time, haven't fallen short uh, in the last race uh, to another team. This time, it looked like over the entire season as the second or third fastest team. It's really hard to tell because McLaren has such a huge drop off in the last few races that uh, if it wasn't for that drop off, McLaren could very well be uh, classified as the second fastest team. But because of that drop off, Ferrari could overtake them and secure P2 by a big margin as well. Both teams have five victories. Ferrari has three more podiums at 15, uh, more pole positions at six by one, and three more fastest laps on five. McLaren has 433 points and P3. Uh, Aston Martin ended up 30 points out of Mercedes. So, despite the travel and being very uneven, yeah, who knows what, what could have been if they had two Alonso's? We will never know. Probably would finish between the constructors. Judging by where Alonso was, because in the end Alonso held to the P2 in the tri Drivers' Championship up until the last race uh, throughout most of the season. So yeah, a great season from Alonso, not as much for a stroll, but the team improved a little last season. They could manage uh, good results for the entire season, not just a start. Mercedes, for 67 points, yeah, a good, a good start, very decent start. They were like almost leading instructors or maybe even leading the instructors at the start of the season while well, the first few races but then just had this massive drop off from uh being the second fastest team in times to essentially fighting for barely any points and then just came back to score occasional podiums with with their driver lineup yep uh, uh pretty unwhelming season for mercedes but still the two victories that's two more than the well, one more than previous two years combined, so it's kind of a kind of an improvement, but not, not the greatest season for Mercedes. Two victories, nine podiums, and a fastest lap for them in the end. Alpine. Alpine is an interesting team because they start the season uh, looking like a back marker, and then get some upgrades in, uh, could fight the racing bulls cars, and Williams has occasionally actually got some good top 10 positions. Put another upgrade package, and suddenly they looked like an actually very very good team like they they could challenge for top six finishes consistently at the at the end of the season and and yeah if if they had that gap to red bull uh from the end of the season at the start probably could have finished uh higher in the constructors we would never know as so yeah they they pretty much had the mclaren uh from 2023 light as they couldn't chump any team in the constructors as mclaren did last year Racing Bulls team, 68 points, and it's very sad that they get to 69, but it's, yeah, maybe if they would be called Toro Rosso, I would just give them a point somewhere there while you, were, yeah, while, while you weren't looking. So, <laughs> yeah, Racing Bulls team, I really don't like the name, and I don't really like the name they're trying to use in real life. Obviously, they, they're hesitant to use Racing Bulls because people would... Definitely want to say Racing Bulls over V Car or whatever uh, the name is. Uh, yeah, they decided to just remain Racing Bulls officially uh, at like in the administrations, but call themselves V Car or whatever just to give spotlight to the sponsors and other really like that. Which is my opinion. I am I'm so against these weird team names. They just promote the sponsors instead of having an actual team identity. And in this case, the, the team has been there for years. Uh, we can accept that the Alphatar rebrand as it was actual rebrand. It was a brand that could be behind and it, something that now we don't have a team name for this team. It's RB or Racing Bulls. This not even even Racing Bulls is not an actual team name. It's just awful because we already have a Red Bull team, and it's pretty much almost the same name. Yeah, uh, um, as as you can see, I'm really really not. 
uh, hyped about this team whatsoever, even though their delivery looks all right. Uh, they, I'm just I'm just not gonna be fan of that team despite liking both drivers they have. Williams P8 35 points and victory from Saudi Arabia. This this team, even though uh, I think I think I'm just a point they have more points than last season, uh, but finished lower in the constructors mainly because just the top five teams were taking so many points, and then there are two teams that were uh, over the entire season faster than them. They could manage a podium, which Racing Bulls couldn't, but it was mostly just a luck in Saudi Arabia, for example. They, they, they had a difference. Like they had a strange season. They sometimes looked like a point scorer team. Sometimes looked like a back marker. It was like you, you can never know what Williams are up to. Has on the other hand twenty points in the podium. I have no idea how those twenty points just came for Has. They didn't seem like uh, a point scoring team for the entire season, and they somehow got a podium. In, in Singapore and level points finish as well. It's just how did, how did that thing happen? I, I have no idea. Just just simulation of things, I guess. Sauber, another team team name I'm very very uh, not happy with. As I, I know they rebranded as something else. I'm gonna call it Sauber. I don't care. They're Sauber for me, and I will note uh, recognize that gambling brand as their team name providing testing or whatever until Audi Audi comes and rebrands that team to their their works team essentially. And yeah um just what, what are these two teams that they they ruined the sport for me honestly. I, I couldn't be I, I shouldn't probably talk about that in the last race of the simulation uh, race of the simulation but really, like just move on I guess. Uh yeah if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe like the video and comment down below what you want to see for my content moving forward. This has been an incredible two months of simulating this season. It's been very exciting at times, but in the end, yeah, we kind of know what's going to happen. Max is going to win his fourth driver's championship and uh, equal drivers like Sebastian Vettel and uh, Alan Prost for, well, four driver's titles and actually equal, equal Vettel. Uh, I believe Schumacher and Hamilton as well for most consecutive titles as well. Well, Hamilton got 2017, 2019, 2020, 2018. Yeah, Hamilton got four in a row as well. Schumacher got from 2000 to, to 2004. So that's actually five titles con uh, consecutively, I think. And Fatal, obviously, 2011 to 2013. Yeah, uh, I should probably stop waffling at uh, this point. It's just. It's pointless. This simulation is ended. I hope you enjoyed it uh, as much as I did. Um, and yeah, I'll try to uh, use this concept more in the future. And yeah, uh, as always, see you.